Hello and welcome to Negan Report, your weekly roundup of all the latest Negan news and all other photographic announcements that we found interesting. Is Constantine here? And this is Becky. Number 85? It is. It's been a fairly quick week because last podcast came out on Thursday last week. So actually on Friday morning. So Gosh, that was a bit late, wasn't it? Exactly. So what we did is because there's no major news really. We went to all other news that came out last week, but we're in the shadow of the 1728 announcement and also that lens roundup. So let's start with delivery updates. What do we have, Becky? So in the UK, I don't have any updates on Z9s, but we are seeing a trickle through of 100 to 400s now. So if you haven't placed an order for one, the lead time is much shorter than it was. Um, mm. In fact, I think of the delivery that we're getting this week, we're contacting the waiting list sort of bit by bit, but we have about three or four left over to contact the remainder of the waiting list. The waiting list is very long. But mm. as as we go through the waiting list, there will always be people who pop up and say, That's oh, true. I want it now. Remember um, me. Yeah, exactly. But then we've also got 404.5. That's steadily coming in. 805.6 is slow, but is coming in. No news, sadly, on the 402.8. But we know that they've stopped orders for those now. So yeah. um, hopefully Nikon will be catching up very, very soon on their deliveries so that we can then start taking fresh orders and deliver the ones that we already want to deliver. All right, let's move to the United States. Yes. We've got uh, Nikon Z9 is being delivered by b &H for orders placed in July 2022. And small dealers like Post Photo are actually delivering cameras that uh, were pre-ordered in September. So some good things are happening there. I went through the comments on all the popular websites and people report that in Germany, small dealers sometimes have a free stock for a day or so. Mm. So if you're in Germany, it might be worth calling them up and see what's happening. Normally, big companies who supply those cameras, they're going to be basically with long list or back orders. But it's interesting that those things are happening. So hopefully we start seeing improvements week by week by week by week. Yes, I'm really, really hoping that by the end of the year, and this is just my wish, my dream, mm -hmm. shall we say? Yeah, maybe a pipe dream, but that by the end of the year, we've fulfilled all of our back orders on the Z9 and that we are actually taking fresh orders from January 2023. But let's see. Watch this space, folks. We'll keep you posted. That's true. And then hopefully that also will show us that actually now with the steady supplies of those cameras, we can move on to the new releases. Speaking of. Speaking of new releases, according to Nikon rumors, we should expect Nikon Z8 in 2023. According to their information the time frame they were given by multiple sources is March or early April 2023 and then they say they're not sure if it's going to be an official announcement or it's going to be a development announcement but it seems to be that that is the time frame they were given he thinks that we're not going to see any development announcements this year what do you think do you have a tiny hope that we're going to see at least them saying Z8 is in development um, I think they were pretty cagey about it, to be honest. Uh, when we spoke to the Nikon staff at the photography show, they were keeping, as I said, they were holding their cards very, very close to their chest. They were completely not interested in even acknowledging the fact that we said the word Z8 in their proximity. So I think they might hold off maybe, maybe December. But yeah. I don't think we'll see a development announcement before then. And realistically, I think it will be next year. That's true. I mean, some like some of the people we talked about it, they were a little bit kind of they, they were a little bit cagey. They were just saying saying to us, just hold on a little bit, like just just be patient. I don't know what that means. It kind of gives me hope for this year, mm. but it's also could be just a visual thinking just to not make us super upset about those <laughs> things scream and throw our exactly. toys out of our push exactly. chest because we are the part of the internet mob and we get upset and we start to scream on the internet that's right now they did say on nikon rumors it gets a bit more complicated when we get down to what when the z8 would be expected to be delivered and apparently there are two different scenarios a nikon z9 like camera without the built-in grip which we talked about yeah. same sensor as the z9 but mm -hmm. smaller body basically impossible to achieve the same performance in a smaller body it doesn't make sense to me this yeah. is nikon rumors it right? doesn't make sense to me either it doesn't make sense to tom hogan but uh pundits on the internet say it's gonna happen so again we will continue and some of us is going to say, I told you so. Um, Hopefully it's going to be me. It's this one. Uh, the other scenario is a mirrorless version of the D850, meaning slower, higher resolution camera. One possible scenario, 
just speculation, 60 plus megapixels and a three and a half thousand dollar price tag. This does make sense to me, i.e. Nikon rumors. If true, Nikon is basically trying to repeat the huge success they had with the D850 and I believe this will actually work. We do need another D850 like yeah. release, I think. Just that's my own feeling. When yeah. I look at numbers and what the pre-orders were like, the D850 actually was beaten in pre-orders by the Z9. However, it was not that far off. We had yeah. a colossal uptake for the D850 when it f was first announced, more yeah. so yeah. than the 800 and the 800E. That's right. And it's still the best selling DSLR yeah. at this moment. And that's where my logic is coming from, of the higher resolution gripless body. Yes. You know, so the battery pack, not the side grip. So... And Tom Hogan apparently agrees with me. So, Becky, since you can read and I can't, can you just tell our viewers what Tom thinks about that? Yes, he says, Imaging really needs to step up its game, though. The market demand for great camera and lens products is there, but it feels to me that Nikon is a bit too slow in delivering to that demand at the moment and is slowly losing the momentum in it gained with the Z9. It's going to take another sensational product to regain that momentum. Nikon knows it. I know it. A few months ago, I sensed a shift in what I was hearing out of Tokyo and it seems there's been a shift in urgency towards producing another winner like the Z9. It can only really be a Z8 that got fast-tracked that fits the need. Nothing else would have the resonance needed. Nothing else would still the long-term Nikon loyalists. Now... <laughs> I like the fact that it's from an article called Good Grief Charlie Brown. Yeah. It really communicates to me. That's true. And that was an article about Nikon Rumors publishing a roadmap saying that this is the roadmap. I don't think it's right, but it's a roadmap. And then coming out three days later saying, yeah, it was a roadmap. It was just someone was trying to kind of predict things. Mm. And that's what he's referring to. Now, I agree with someone certain things. In that article, he also says that we will have Olympics in 2024. And before that, a lot of companies will release their flagship products. So, for example, right. Sony might release a one Mark II version. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll see Z9 Mark II by 2024, mm -hmm. which means they need to release Z8 in 2023. I see that. So another point is losing the momentum. Obviously, Z9 was a clear bombshell for a lot of people. And right before the actual announcement, it was so quiet. Remember, we had a live stream saying, guys, just hold on a little bit. You know, it's all fine. You know, just wait a little bit. It's going to happen. And then when Z9, actually, the development announcement was made, everyone was super excited because no one expected Negan to actually compete mm. with the top offerings. Mm. So this momentum is here, but I agree with Tom because we start to lose it because it's September now. Yes, so the development announcements were around that time last year. Yeah. The release was basically Christmas, or let's call it early January this year as well. So we are losing this momentum. So in my opinion, that's why I really have a tiny hope. I know it's probably 99% it's not going to happen, but I really hope so they're going to just throw us a bone and say, yes, it's in development. Okay. So give us six months lead time. You see what I mean? Give us, tell us it's fine. We, and we're developing and expected spring 2023. But mm. at this stage... I'm like super smiling, super happy. I know it's happening, you know, and then everyone starts to prepare their finances. And in this day and age, it's quite important to have a lead time for the product. It is. I like that. I like that sort of cheery optimism about, about the future release. And I do also think that Z9 momentum also refers to people pre-ordering the camera yeah. and then not receiving it. So that's another interesting one. Where photographers have this, well, not all photographers, but a lot of very keen photographers have this tendency to go, oh, it's new and shiny and I need it now. We're all guilty of it, so I understand. But if they can't then get their hands on said product, it loses its sparkle yeah. a little bit. It's the same with iPhones, laptops, yeah. gaming consoles. I mean, okay, case in point, my husband could not get hold of a PS5 when it first came out because he was not one of these people that was able to get it and it's been two nearly two years right yeah. two years he's now gotten one because he could walk into a shop and pick it up yeah. but the urgency of getting it now 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 was lost on him because he couldn't get hold of one and That's i think true. that the z9 might be a similar thing people will just go oh just wait yeah. for a, a bit and so just think how many gamers quit gaming for two years because their ps4 didn't cut us anymore and they couldn't that... get PS5. <laughs> Why? Well, I, I have to say from experience that wasn't the They just found yeah. other solutions. No, look, I went back to my Game Boy Advance. Did you? Yeah, and, you know, Tetris always rules. <laughs> Did you know? they have Tetris on Game Boy Advance? 
Tetris is everywhere, okay. let's be honest. <laughs> um, but yeah, I absolutely agree with you. It's it's one of the things where, again, we are in a world where, unfortunately, the supply is so low and the same as there's a shortage on pretty much everything. We talked about it to death. So in terms of this, yeah, you need to fill the orders and make customers happy. And that's important because people are still waiting for their Z9s and their exotic lenses, et cetera, et cetera. From the other point of view, we also want new products in and people who don't need Z9 because they use the camera for something else. Mm. They need that camera and they're waiting. I'm sure among our viewers, we have a lot of guys who are still using D850. And if you look at Tom Hogan's uh, survey that he did uh, a couple of weeks ago, there's still a lot of people who have DSLRs. They're waiting for their product to come in. Maybe they're still on the fence mm -hmm. of going into mirrorless body. So it needs to happen, but I understand there's different angles from there and I understand why it's not happening. And I'm also not happy why it's not happening as well. Exactly that. Exactly that. So it's a tough cookie. It's a, it's a tough cookie. <laughs> it's a tough cookie. Speaking of tough cookies, uh, Nikon Japan announced a price increase. Mm, so this price increase apparently will impact mirrorless cameras, Z lenses, binoculars and golf laser rangefinders. The new prices will become active on October 5th this year. They've said, we'd like to inform you that from Wednesday, the 5th of October, we'll revise the suggested retail price and shipping price of some mirrorless cameras, Z lenses, binoculars and golf laser rangefinders. In a harsh environment such as the recent shortage of semiconductors and soaring raw material costs, we have been striving to reduce costs by promoting efficiency and rationalization. In addition, for binoculars, monoculars and field scope products, since some products have suggested retail price indications and open price indications, we will unify the prices to open prices to avoid confusion among our customers. I'm confused because I don't know what an yeah. open price is. <laughs> well, my thinking about that open prices could be not like, you know, that they would let dealers to dictate what price they want to sell it. But that's so, the law. They have to do that anyway. Yeah, but if you look at, uh, you know, the situation even in the UK five years ago mm. and to a situation now where everyone pretty much sells at RRPs, well, five years Suggested ago, it was Suggested retail price. Yeah, called. so or recommend retail price. Then, let's say five years ago, people were just cutting their profits to the bone effectively. And I remember we were selling some cameras effectively at some like 50 quid loss. Yes. You know, just to shift the product. So that thing have changed. And uh, that's something that manufacturers didn't put monopoly on it, but there was some sort of uh, things put in place where it would let the dealers to not compete each other by undercutting each other, but compete with each other by providing the service on the products to sell. Exactly. It's uh, definitely more supportive of the dealer when they do that. Um, although, obviously, as a customer, you might be a bit miffed that the price is the same from one shop to another. Now, let's let's have a look, because does this affect us, do you think? No. So there's quite a few things to unpack here. So we've got uh, price increases for Japan only. Mm. So that affects, effectively... Japan. We already had our price increase back in April. Mm -hmm. We also had Sport Optics price increase in UK and Europe on, in September. Mm -hmm. So that didn't affect imaging products. Now, USA had their price release in August. A couple of things to keep in mind, though. So, yen is its lowest for 24 years. Pound is at its lowest since 1980 compared to US dollar. So, effectively, while this price increase affects Japan only, I would expect another price increase to come to UK and the United States. Just look at this as well as inflation. So inflation affects also the cost of raw materials and semiconductors. Yes, so let's sure. keep that in mind and logistics side of things of moving products in and out, et cetera, et cetera. So in terms of this, I would expect that another price release will come at least to EU probably in April next year. I don't think they'll do this financial year. But I think it's highly likely that in April we'll start to see that just due to economic conditions that are currently happen happening all over the world. Yes. Now, interesting enough, we have other suppliers who supply accessories who, although they don't affect products that we specifically stock, when it comes to products made in the USA, because the pound is so weak against the uh, US dollar at the moment, they're having to increase their UK prices. These are things like Optex straps and, and stuff like that, stuff that's actually made in the US. Yeah. Uh, again, we don't stock it, but it's just interesting to see how every every single little area of uh, of the photographic industry is affected, not just the, the big products like camera manufacture. 
Yeah, so tell us what you think about it. Obviously, from one point, as a consumer, we don't like the price hikes, but as a consumer, we also know that price of food has increased quite a bit, the cost of bills, et cetera, et cetera. Unfortunately, for a lot of people, it means being priced out of their loved hobby. But the good news is there's a very strong second-hand market, especially if you still use DSLRs, all those beautiful and fantastic cameras, like the 50 can be had. I wouldn't call it a fraction, but definitely cheaper compared to the current mirrorless offerings. And obviously, if you look at the lenses, something like 28 1.4 or 105 1.4 can be had reasonably cheaply compared to, let's say, their Z offerings. Exactly. Fantastic. All right, let's move on to other news. And you can open a brand and you can store in Berlin. Yeah. Yeah. The store is located in the Alexa shopping center. If all your smart speakers just turned on, my apologies. Alexa, play gasolina. <laughs> it's in the huge media market on the fourth floor for those Berlin viewers. Customers can try out the Z9, other Z cameras and Z lenses like the 800mm or 400mm. You can also directly buy the 800Z and the Z9, which are usually pretty rare in Germany. So that's interesting. Yeah, we had a discussion about a couple of months ago when you can open a similar store in China and we said this is the future of Nikon retail mm. and how does it affect us. So do have a look at that. But my question is, obviously, this is in, based in the huge media market um, um, shopping center. I think media market is like a big electronics dealer in Germany. Mm. So my question is, is it a part of media market, something that they kind of done together or is it its own thing? Because obviously in the UK, we have a similar show by Fujifilm. Yes. And it's in Covent Garden. So it seems like to me that we potentially will see those shops all over Europe, including the UK. Yeah, we also have, for example, like the Leica store, which is that's true. Leica only. The question is, if it's a Leica store is actually run by Leica, the Fujifilm store according to my conversations with people who work there, is actually run by someone else. Yes, I know. I, I remember that conversation. So yeah. the question is, is this is going to be a Nikon stop? This is actually, look, like the way the things are set up there remind me of Nikon School, which yeah. we used to have near Oxford Circus, and it's closed, I think, in January last year or pre-COVID. I'm not sure. The question is, obviously, the school had the museum as well. They run courses and technical supports. This is actually a retail environment where people would come in and purchase their equipment then. So I'm not sure. We might see those things eventually. We might. You can also come to Grace of Westminster. And you should, because we're nice people and... And we know our stuff. And we know our stuff. And we have a beautiful secondhand showroom and many other reasons why it, it's worth coming here. And yeah, see. just happy faces in general. Yeah. From happy faces to corporate news, Nikon announced several investments into a company. So we're going to do it really, really quickly. Thanks. Because a couple of weeks ago, again, we talked about SLM Solution, which is a big additive manufacturing, effectively metal 3D printing company. So they're doubling down on that. So they now also announced the investments in RF Solution provider, Opticis Inc. So I guess in cooperation. So what is it, Becky? Uh, so apparently it's a global industry leader in the design and manufacture of metal printed antennas for commercial and government applications where high performance, size and weight are critical. The investment will enable Nikon and Opticis to boost utilization of metal additive manufacturing for applications, including high performance antennas and other RF products. Nikon also announced investment in hybrid manufacturing technologies, Global Inc., and that company is a award-winning industry leader in additive manufacturing, again, like SLM. So it successfully created an approach that enables users to integrate additive tools on, onto any platform. To know what that means. Uh, it's interesting because it says it unifies multiple complementary technologies in one setup. So I suppose it's some kind of manufacturing streamlining. Uh, yeah, so it makes things work together. Yeah. Effectively, which should technically simplify the process because things can talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we are right. I'm sure that some of our viewers who are very technical in, the, in this field uh, can explain it to us in the comments below. Now, obviously, so they announced public takeover of SLM. So they announced this. So it seems like, yeah, as I said, they're doubling down on IT manufacturing. So it seems to me they're looking for different ways of making money. And IT manufacturing, it seems to align with their 2030 vision. Oh, yes, that vision that they had. Exactly. So if you invest, I guess it's going to make you happy. 
at the moment none of those things are making profit but again it's 2022 so hopefully by 2030 we start to see a huge development in that and as i say i'm looking forward to print out my z8 in metal mm -hmm. moving on to more nikon corporate stuff nikon published an article the future of nikon design now if you read the article it's a lot of sort of general fluff about their marketing ethos which is fine and all very nice and well however they have put a very lovely picture of their rather fetching design team which i think is worth a look at if nothing else well they look young and healthy they do and happy Exactly. So that's good. Shall we move on to the third yeah, party? Yeah, sure. Let's do that. There's a couple of lens releases this week. So first one up is Venus Optics Laova released their 58mm f2.8 2x ultra micro upper lens. So that is for Nikon Z mounts. I'm just looking at the sample pictures that they... It's phenomenal, actually. Exactly, that, that they provided. And they just look fantastic. I think... Like when you look at the announcement of the lenses and sample pictures never look good. And it's the first time where I see the sample picture. I'm like, mm, yeah, that's that looks sharp. It does that's it nice. almost make you want to do macro photography? Exactly. Not flowers, <laughs> though, but macros. <laughs> I'll learn to love flower photography, I think, at some point. it's uh, You will wear me down, Becky. I will, maybe. We also have the rumoured Nisi 9mm f2.8 APS-C manual focus lens for the Z mount officially released now so you can get it which is great we don't have a price as of yet but it's 364 grams the fact that it's nine millimeters is is really nice that's yeah. a super wide angle a uh, little manual focus lens there for the dxz system and it's what else can we say about it well what i can say about this um, we have people complaining about no like no dx lenses for that mounts and from nikon side of things it's true and they definitely should improve on that but if you look in third party offerings there are quite a few lenses to choose from, so which is a good thing. So starting from White Voigtlander, and you know, with Nisi, TT Archson, you name it, there are lots of DX lenses for that mount available. There are. Now we also have an adapter by Mike, which is the Canon EF to Nikon Z mount adapter. This is priced at $160 and will support all Canon EF and EFS lenses to be mounted on a Nikon Z5, Z6, Z7, Z62, you name Z72, it. etc. Now they've also promised full support for autofocus and electronic contacts to allow photographers to control the lens directly from the body. And it does mean that both the lens stabilization, if your lens has it, and the body stabilization will work together. Okay, well, why are we mentioning Canon to Nikon Zen adapter? Well, with the news coming out of Canon locking the, effectively the RF mount for their mirrorless system, maybe some people are looking to switch and they still have a good range of Canon lenses that they already bought. So now you can buy a Nikon body, start to use your Canon lenses with auto focus and metadata, etc., etc., and then eventually to upgrade to a native glass. There you go. At $160, it's a pretty good price, I would say. It's not too shabby. Now, speaking of other adapters, there is the option for an FTZ on a budget. Meet the Photo-C Nikon FTZ mount adapter, which costs only $20. All right, so this is obviously a budget offering. It doesn't offer any electronics whatsoever, any pass-through, etc. Et it's just metal, I think. It's effectively a metal, so very, very similar to, you know, some Chinese offerings where you can convert one adapter to another. Mm -hmm. So the good news is that this company is known to produce actually good stuff at a reasonably uh, low price. And if you've got a bunch of manual focus lenses, so effectively, or AFD glass, which doesn't have auto focus with FTZ adapter, that's a good way maybe to buy adapters and just attach them permanently to the lens. So you don't need to remove the lens from the adapter and put the new one, et cetera, et cetera. So, very true. And it offers infinity focusing, which is guaranteed, which a lot of those Chinese makers sometimes don't do so if actually you focus to infinity and then you kind of pass through that and it becomes blurred so this one it seems like the machine engineering and manufacturing is quite precise nice now we also have a company called Leo Photo that have released lens feet for Nikon lenses and although it's not a one foot to rule them all uh, we do have a few offerings you've got the NF01 lens foot, which is compatible with the 70 to 200 and 500 5.6. The NF02, which works with other F mount lenses. I won't give you the full list, but we'll include the link for you. And then we've got one which is called the NF05, which is compatible with the Z lenses 70 to 200 2.8 and the 100 to 400. So if you're looking for an Arca Swiss compatible foot and you don't want to spend your Doshola on a mm -hmm. Kirk or really right stuff. Yeah. 
foot, then this is actually quite a good way to do it. Absolutely. Price is 66 American dollars. That's definitely a lot cheaper than the other offerings. For sure. All right, let's move on to We Can Read and Watch then. The first one up is another chapter of Nikon 1001 blog. This one talks about IX Nikon 30 to 60 of 45.6 zoom lens. No one knows about that, but apparently that lens was made for APS cameras like Pronier S. Yes. Now, it's actually a pancake zoom, which is something I've never heard of before. And the article about the Pronia S did not age very well. Let's leave it at that. But APS, it's interesting because this APS camera, the Pronia S, had an F mount. And according to Ken Rockwell, it actually worked with all of his F mount mm. lenses, which is interesting. Obviously, the film format is much smaller, uh, so it's not full frame, but it worked and focused on everything. That's true. I think the Nikon APS cameras are just like Nikon One cameras in digital. They just didn't exist, and that's why I don't know much about them. But apparently they were there. And if some of you had those, do let us know in the comment below because I want to know what was your experience like. Yeah, we're fascinated. Did you know it's got the three formats? It's got the classic, which is three to two ratio format. Then they had a panoramic one, which is effectively a panoramic. Mm -hmm. And they also had H format, which is high definition. And that's effectively 16 to nine ratio. So similar to cinematography. Wow. All cameras could shoot all three formats on the same roll. Didn't catch on though. Exactly. No. <laughs> but here you have a thought. One of those photographic things that just like died and never came back. Right, moving on. Next up, we have the battle between camera brands is once again focused on lenses by Petapixel. Yeah. This one is a very interesting one, actually, because it talks about systems of different manufacturers. So you're talking about Z systems, RF systems, Sony system, Fujifilm system, etc., etc. And they talk about the lens and availability and design of the lenses. And obviously with the current news coming out of the RF lock and, you know, lockdown and then Nikon opening up to Tamron's and releasing their lenses with the Nikon logo and without. So, you know, it's a very interesting article because it talks about us consumer and how we choose the lenses. Good. Give it a read. Yeah. Last up, we have a Nikon Z9 tutorial managing metadata copyright IPTC GPS by Nikon Europe's YouTube channel. It's almost like a reading a fiction book. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, it's a wrap. Thanks for joining us this week. Yes, thank you very much for watching and or listening. Please give us a like and subscribe on YouTube. Thanks very much to 15,000 of you for being our subscribers. Next target, 100K. Exactly. <laughs> that's, Tomorrow. It's my dream. Um, I want that silver play button. That's all I want. If you're listening on a podcast platform, give us a like, a rating, review. What is it? Reviews are always helpful. Yeah. And you know, like if you drive and you just want to listen to a nice audio book and you just don't have it, then there's our podcast there <laughs> in th 320 kilobits per second, full on high definition. It's wonderful. So do check it out. Absolutely. And if you'd like to find us on the internet, then you can find us on Instagram at the moment. I'm at Rebecca underscore Danese. I'm at Constant Koshkin, the shop at Nikon and Grace. And that's everything. That's all we have for you today. That's all we have for you today. And we will see you next week as usual. In the meantime, take your cameras and get out and take some pictures. <laughs> good, bye bye. Good sage advice. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. <laughs>